What is up everyone, Village Day 51 here with a little response video to Mr. Leslie P. Chambers and his top 10 kaiju battles list. Now this is a friendly response, others have responded, namely Phil the Kaiju King. Okay, make sure you go check out these videos, okay? You know, get yourself some popcorn, get yourself a nice drink, sit back and watch. They talk about a lot of really cool battles and they challenge other G YouTubers to do the same. And they were very nice, and they actually gave me a couple of shout-outs in their videos. And um, I'm very touched. And uh, they kind of challenged me, so I'm here to respond. So, that out of the way, let's get into the honorable mentions. The honorable mentions, the, uh, there are a lot of battles, like kaiju battles. A lot of really, really good ones that didn't really make the list... Be for one reason or another, but there were so many. I could sit here, I could make a top 30, top 50 list, but it's a top 10 list, so we're going to talk about the honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one. Old Rivals. In the film Godzilla King of the Monsters, King Ghidorah is asleep in the South Pole, so... He is awoken by the terrorist group, and he begins, uh, you know, running amok. This thing is massive and monstrous, and it starts killing, you know, the soldiers, and uh, everything seems, you know, at their darkest, when all of a sudden they start to hear a uh, sense on the uh, sonar. All of a sudden the ice starts to glow blue, and out pops Godzilla, okay? The music swells, and it is just... You hear the chanting, you hear just all the epicness. And then all of a sudden, Godzilla steps onto the ice as it shows Ghidorah, and then it shows Godzilla again as he roars in anger at his old rival. And the two begin battling once again, like they did out in the past. As Godzilla defeated him in the past, he must defeat him again. Awesome, but there is one scene in the film that is a little better. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Honorable mention number two. King Kong versus the T-Rex. In the original film, Kong is still getting known to us, okay? Seeing his size, seizing the power that he has, and then we see a very familiar animal that we are all, you know, known to see when it comes to Dinosaur Kingdom, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, okay? Except this one is a little different. It actually stands completely upright rather than hunched over. You know, its skull seems to be a lot bigger, so it seems, this thing's massive, okay? It's a lot bigger than a normal T-Rex that we know. And then he battles Kong, and it is a really, really entertaining fight, and it's a very interesting fight between these two, ending with Kong destroying the T-Rex by breaking his jaw and leaving the thing dead. Awesome fight and showing off how strong Kong could be because he was actually being bitten by this T-Rex and it's not, you know, causing any damage either, okay? If it did, it was very minuscule damage, so that's my uh, next honorable mention. So, next up is a silly one. I understand that. That's the point. It's an honorable mention. Didn't make the list. It is... Minya versus Gabara. That's right, from the film Godzilla's Revenge, a film that I don't really like that much. However, the thing that it does very well is the portrayal of Minya battling his giant bully, Gabara, and then eventually overcoming that bully by using his wits and the help of Ichiro, which I kind of wish that's what the film was completely about, it was mainly about um, Minya, you know, doing his thing, and then at the end of the film, he gets to meet up with Godzilla. And then Gabra fights Godzilla, then after, you know, being defeated uh, by Minya. All right? It's interesting. I like that part. You know, it's really cool. I love the way how Godzilla looks. I love the way how he fights. I love the way how Gabra is. Interesting monster. You know, if they were to do a, a reboot of any sort, and they used uh, Gabra as a uh, monster in the film, I'm not saying the chief antagonist. I'm just saying if they're going to use him, I'm down for seeing Gabra again. You know, just awesome part. And, you know, I love when he fought with uh, Minya. As goofy and as childish as it was, I got it. 
It's just the rest of the film didn't really, you know, sit well with me. So, yeah, that's another honorable mention. After that, we've got a big one. I wish I put this on the list, but there are other fights on the list that I feel kind of trump it. So, we have... The Children's Land War at the end of Godzilla vs. Gaiyan. It's an awesome fatal four-way battle between the King of the Monsters and his tag team partner, Angerus. Well, it's not really a fatal four-way, it's a tag team. And I just go with it. It's Godzilla and Angerus versus King Ghidra, King Ghidra and his tag team partner, the brand new Gaiyan. Awesome fight between these, especially a very heart-wrenching moment when Godzilla is being beaten up by his doppelganger. A Godzilla tower that breathes a, a, a beam that's able to bring Godzilla to the ground and almost to death. And then Gaigan goes over and proceeds to smash Godzilla's skull open, blood beginning to come out. Yeah, there are films where it looks like Godzilla's going to lose. This is one of them. Okay, now, of course, Godzilla wins in the end. He hulks up and kicks some ass, as he's supposed to, and the day is saved. Godzilla and Gigan defeat Ghidra and uh, Gigan, and uh, it's a fun battle. It's a very heart-wrenching battle as well, with a lot of help from the humans, and uh, trying to run away from those scary cockroaches. All right. And my next honorable mention is... We have Godzilla versus the military. Now, this might seem a little cheap because it's not a really a fight between two kaiju, but Godzilla battling the military is as old as, you know, as the series goes. You know, it's his first uh, fight in the, you know, Godzilla films. You know, he fights the military. You know, he fights them in uh, Gojira back in 1954. He's defeated by the military and, uh, you know, a scientist, Dr. Sarazawa. You know, conscripted by the military to kill the original Godzilla. Next, the next beginning of the series, the Heisei series, Godzilla rises, you know, and uh, in the return of Godzilla, and he starts battling the military. And he has to take on the Super X, a form of militaristic weapon that, you know, is going to fight him. Other things built by the military, including Mecha Godzilla and Mogera, fighting the military. You know, the uh, apes from the black hole. You can kind of see them as a military as well. Okay? The Millennium Series, when Godzilla, you know, goes to fight Orga. Not before he does, but, you know, throughout the film, they're constantly fighting him. You know, remember what they were doing, the crap goose uh, rockets to try to take him down before he actually, you know, interacted with Orga? You know, Godzilla always battling the military. And that is the last honorable mention. We are now going to get into the list. And what a list it is. Let's get started. And where we have Godzilla vs. Angerus from the film Godzilla Raids Again. This is the fight that started all of the big ones. You know... Before we had Godzilla fighting a giant ape. Before we had Godzilla battling a three-headed dragon. Before we had Godzilla fighting a giant uh, moth. Before we had Godzilla fighting a doppelganger of himself. Everything began with Angerus. Angerus and Godzilla, you know, battling each other in that awesome film, Godzilla Raids Again. Uh, more to come on that, by the way. And uh, these two have gone from not only as bitter rivals, but then becoming the best of friends. A friendship I would have liked to have seen a little more in the Godzilla franchise, outside of the Showa series. Uh, so that is my number 10. And next up for number 9, we have Gyra vs. Sanda from the film War of the Gargantuas. 
A sequel to the film Frankenstein Conquers the World. These two monsters, one from the sea, one from the mountains, battle each other across uh, Japan, ending in Tokyo and then out in the sea and being swallowed up by a volcano. As silly as that sounds, this is an epic film. Okay, these monsters, you know, are very humanoid, and uh, the moves they're able to pull off are very interesting and a lot more uh, choreographed than, uh, say, for a Godzilla film, because in a Godzilla film, they're a lot more difficult to move around in. And suit actor Haru Nakajima, who portrayed Godzilla in the show series, portrayed Gaira, and he says that he was able to really cut loose and really have a lot more fun with Gaira, especially with the expression with the eyes, see how angry, how violent he is. And you see the, uh, the loving Sanda, who wants to calm his brother down, that's not happening as they two continue to fight each other, and then eventually they both are destroyed in the end. I do not like that ending, but it had to end, and uh, they both had to be destroyed in the end because if they were left alive, pieces of them could have fallen off, and we could have had an army of gargantuas running around the world. So, yeah. Number eight. We have... the finale to destroy all monsters. I've had a discussion with uh, Leslie Chambers defending this film, and I still really do like Destroy All Monsters. Okay, if this did end the Godzilla franchise, yes, I'd be a little upset as well, but it didn't, and the Godzilla franchise went on to create so many more excellent films, and this film is its really good. Um, beginning to end, I really enjoyed, but the final battle is where the money is at. Bringing back uh, King Ghidra at the end of the film, um, I did not see this movie before, and uh, that was legit a surprise. I had no idea they were going to bring him back. And he was going to battle all the, well, most of the monsters from uh, the Straw Monsters, from Monster uh, World, Monster Island. And uh, having a very grisly and uh, brutal death. And it's funny that... Um, I had never seen this film, but actually I did see this film because a lot of the footage they used in Destroy All Monsters for Godzilla when he's fighting with Ghidra, or when Ghidra's fighting with Angus, they actually used this footage in Godzilla vs. Gigant, a film I talked about earlier. And, uh, it's an awesome film. Um, and the ending is very awesome. I just don't like the fire dragon part. They should have just ended it with King Ghidra, but that's my number eight. <laughs> Alright, so, number seven, we have Gamera versus Super Gauss from the film Gamera Guardian of the Universe. I love the Heisei Gamera films as well. They are awesome, and yes, they are on par with Godzilla films. And uh, are they better than the Heisei Godzilla films? Well, that's debatable. Okay, they're really good. They're better than a lot of the Heisei Godzilla films, I'll give you that. But... Um, are they better than all of them? No. Um, a film I'm going to talk about a little later on, I think, has all three of those movies beat in emotion and monster action, but we'll get into that later. So, Gauss is a giant bird. Well, they say it's a bird, it looks like a bat, but anyway, um, that wakes up. There's three of them. And they eat their brothers and then fly around uh, Japan. They eventually, you know, get cornered in a, a baseball stadium to be captured. However, they start to escape, bring Gamera. And uh, the way how Gamera is brought back in this film is really awesome, you know. You know, it's like Godzilla feeling. You know, it's, it's, it feels really cool, and he comes back, and he just smacks the first Gauss out of the air, and it explodes, and then he fights the second one in the mountains, and he explodes that one. Then he goes to fight the third one, the third one uh, beginning to feed and beginning to, uh, you know, learn more about its body actually grows to its to Gamera size as well. And two of them battle in uh, Tokyo, and they fight, you know, they fight in the high above the skies, and then Gamera explodes it with a, you know, big plasma ball blast. It just looks awesome. Just, that is the way how I like to remember Gamera, okay? The show films I enjoyed for the most part. There are some of them I wish did not happen, but did, and, but we have the Heisei Gamera series, which is awesome, and a not-so-good, but 
passable sequel to the, well, not sequel, it's something completely different, but we'll talk about it another time. Maybe in a Why They Hate the Video. Maybe. Because I kind of don't like that movie either. Anyway, moving on to number six. We got some more Showa action here. We've got Godzilla vs. Hedra, the final battle on Mount Fuji. So, Hedra, the monster from space that's made up of uh, sludge and pollution, battles the king of the monsters on Mount Fuji, actually taking a form resembling Godzilla, whether it's to mock him or to actually fight him more accurately. But throughout the film, Hedra is very elusive. Um, Godzilla can't get a grip on this thing. You know, at first it seems like Godzilla has the fight in hand, but then Hedra evolves into his flying saucer mode, and he starts spitting out, you know, uh, acid, you know, um, poisonous gas, taking Godzilla down a peg, and flies around, and eventually turns into his giant form on Mount Fuji. The humans concoct a little plan that they want to dry out Hedra, kind of like you dry out a turd, and then uh, watch it uh, crumble away, but it's take a lot more than just sunlight to do it. So he battles with Godzilla, and then the two battle all over Mount Fuji. And it's actually very impressive the way how these two battled. And also very disgusting when uh, Hedra throws Godzilla into like a little canyon hole, whatever, and begins to defecate on Godzilla. I'm not, I don't, people say it's sludge, people say that it's just an attack. I'm calling it as I see it. He's defecating all over Godzilla. Okay, Godzilla is even like, ew, no, I don't want it, get it off me, what is this crap? The two continue to battle, and Godzilla's not getting any more of an upper hand over this monster. Usually Godzilla rallies and he's able to, you know, defeat Hedra, but Hedra is so elusive and very, you know, disturbing. Even Atomic Breath's not doing anything, you know. Hedra has this uh, eye laser thing that uh, burns all the skin off of Godzilla's hand. You know, he shoots crap at Godzilla's eye and, you know, burns his eye shut as well. It's just, you know, I've seen Godzilla fight a bunch of monsters before, but geez, he's getting his ass kicked in this. Okay, I don't like it. I don't like saying it. It's true. He's getting his ass kicked. Eventually, Godzilla learns to fly. Yeah, Godzilla learns to fly. And he actually drags Hedra back to, you know, where the humans have set up their little electric fence thing to dry him out. It doesn't work. Godzilla says, screw that. He makes it work by doing the old uh, kickaroo, and he starts, um, you know, breathing fire at, you know. When something doesn't work, just hit it a couple of times, and then it'll start working. Godzilla gets it working. They dry out Hedra. Godzilla rips out the eggs, brains. Um, comment down if you know what these things are. But anyway, he rips them out, and then he destroys those. Hedra is defeated. Godzilla then spooks the human beings, thinking he's going to attack them. But he's like, nah, just kidding. And he walks away as they're playing Save the Earth. And then another Hedra head pops out of a raw sewage plant. Making it look like there's going to be a sequel. However, it upset some people over in Japan. They did not want a sequel. They didn't want the director touching Godzilla ever again. And then, we never got a sequel. There was a sequel planned for Godzilla vs. Hedra, but it got nixed very quickly. Alright, so, that's that for that. Number five. One of the most important Godzilla films of all time. King Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, you know, this film made Godzilla a household name. Okay. Everybody noticed Godzilla with Gojira. Everybody, you know, reacted to Godzilla raids again in their own way. You know, I'm not judging. I enjoyed the film a lot. And I understand its importance to the Godzilla franchise. King Kong vs. Godzilla gave Godzilla household name across every house around the world. Because King Kong has been known throughout the years as well. 
And the two of them made it big after this. You know, Godzilla was able to have his own franchise, you know, just explode and go off and be incredible. King Kong had his own sequel. Not not sequel. You know, I keep using that word wrong. He had his own little spin-off of films with Toho. Well, film with Toho with King Kong Escapes. An underrated film, mind you. I enjoyed that film. Okay, lots of fun. Mechanic Kong is fun. Goro Swords is awesome. And then we had them at Reborn in the late 70s and uh, 80s. And then there was talks of these two battling each other again. And now if these two will battle each other again in 2020, Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, there's a lot of debate about this film. About which part of this film is the best? Well, of course, the fight on uh, Mount Fuji is amazing. However, let's go back and absorb the first fight between Godzilla and Kong. Now, there's those who say that it's not really a fight. You're wrong. That's the only time I will say that you're wrong in this video. Is that the fight that they first had was a fight. Kong th had offense. Godzilla had offense. However, Kong retreated deciding to fight another day because he was completely bewildered by Godzilla's atomic breath. Now, some say that's cheap. Well, you know, why would uh, Kong run away? Well, you live on an island, you don't see a giant radioactive dinosaur breathing fire. A tactical retreat isn't really a bad thing. It's never a bad thing, okay? You learn, you come back, you fight again. And not only did he learn from that, but he also learned to hey, how to deal with that in the... Uh, rematch. Now, as far as there being a winner in this film, there were, it was a draw. That's the way how I see it. It was just a draw. Kong did not beat Godzilla. Godzilla did not beat Kong. It was an awesome fight, and you can actually break it down to where you'd say Godzilla defeated Kong multiple times in this movie. But in the end, who was left standing? Well, they say Kong was left standing. However, in the Japanese version, during the credits, right before, you know, they do the uh, Toho emblem, you know, Godzilla roars as well. So, it's a draw, in my opinion. Okay, a lot of other people's opinion as well. Okay? We'll just have to wait and see what happens in 2020 when these two go one-on-one -on -one once again. Okay, other than that, that was an incredible movie as well. You know, I love the human characters. You know, very, you know, they're really trying to capture the spirit of the original King Kong as well, as well as capturing the ferocity and monstrousness of Godzilla. And it was just a lot of fun, you know, and uh, both versions. Now, the, the English version, um, I've come to, you know, gain a little better respect for. You know, I saw it when I was a kid, and I was a little annoyed with it, you know, especially with the acting. But, you know, watching it compared with the Japanese version, they're both marvelous films. Go out, watch both versions. Now, the English version does change the ending a little bit and cut out Godzilla's roar, making it look like Kong did win overall. But in the original version, both monsters roar, so we'll have to wait. See happens in 2020, see if the same thing happens, or if we're actually going to get a decisive victor. Next up for number four... We have all of the Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla fights, all the way from 1974 all the way up to 2004. Starting us off in 1974, we have Godzilla battling Mechagodzilla. You know, and uh, it was an amazing battle. You know, King Caesar was there, you know, trying to get a hand. Godzilla, you know, just getting a huge beatdown from uh, Mechagodzilla, and once again, almost being killed. They had a theme in the uh, Showa series. Towards the end of it, you know, let's almost kill Godzilla, and let's have him just overcome everything, which is awesome, by the way. You know, you don't want a uh, character that just can't be defeated. You know, you always want to be able to, you know, portray, you know, worry and, uh, you know, stakes when a character, you know, gets the crap kicked out of him. 
And that fight he had with Mechagodzilla was just amazing. Okay, all the uh, effects, all the explosions, you know, just all the weaponry that Mechagodzilla has, all the perseverance that Godzilla has to, you know, get through them. Awesome. Then we move on to the sequel film to it, you know, Terror of Mechagodzilla, an awesome battle between Godzilla, Mechagodzilla, and newcomer Titanosaurus, where Godzilla had a tag team partner in uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Terror of Mechagodzilla, Mechagodzilla has his own partner. This Mechagodzilla is more of like the, uh, you know, type to stand back, and his fire missiles, you know, mess up Godzilla as Titanosaurus fights. Finally, Godzilla gets his hands on Mechagodzilla to continue to fight each other. Awesome, ripping the head off, revealing another head. You know, the mutants are back. You know, the aliens. You know, and they're, uh, you know, even weirder faces that they have now. You know, awesome. And then Godzilla moving off into the ocean after both monsters are defeated. You know, seemingly ending the Godzilla franchise until he was reborn in 1985. 84. 84 and 85. Anyway, then we move on to one of my personal favorite Godzilla films that I really love. And that is Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla in 1993. Where it's reversed, where it's the humans actually reverse engineer King Ghidorah from the remains of Mecha King Ghidorah, and they create their own, you know, robot defender. Well, mech defender, not robot, you know, it's a mech. And he battles with Godzilla, you know, and it's just an amazing fight, you know. It just shows them standing, you know, as powerful as they are, you know, Godzilla's beam attack doesn't work on Mecha Godzilla's, he has a plasma grenade. So he has to get in close. They actually bash into each other. Awesome. And then finally, it seems like it's all over when Mecha Godzilla kills Godzilla. Okay. Seems like it's all over until Rodan actually, uh, you know, falls on Godzilla, giving him his soul, his life essence, making, you know, Godzilla come back from the dead and having the uranium fire, and he destroys Mecha Godzilla. It's awesome movie. Gave it a watch. So much emotion, so much, you know, heartfelt feelings, you know, felt throughout the entire film. It's awesome. Then we move on to the Millennium series. You know, the first fight between these two is kind of like how people felt with King Kong fighting Godzilla at Mount, Mount Fuji. But the uh, first battle where, oh, it's just a couple of beams and then he runs off. Yes, that was upsetting. However, it built up to the rematch in the city and these two battled each other. And it was awesome ending in a draw when Godzilla and Mechagodzilla fly and flow into the ocean and the absolute Zero Destroyer thing goes off. Seemingly killing both of them, but Godzilla surviving with a much larger wound in his chest coming back for the sequel. You know, when Godzilla, x Mech Godzilla came out, you had to see, you know, a little bit more CG with the monsters, and you see it, see how they fight each other, you know, with a little more enhancements, and it just looks awesome. That CG done well. Then you're pretty much using the uh, sculpts and the models of the suits, and then, you know, doing some CG enhancements, just making them look amazing as they fight each other. Awesome stuff. The sequel, Tokyo SOS, was okay. Um, not the greatest, but, you know, it was okay. So, that is the number four, the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla Legacy. And then we have number three. Godzilla vs. Destroya. From the film of the same title, this was very painful to see, you know. The whole movie, you know something bad's going to happen to Godzilla. They're talking about meltdown. They're talking about he's going to die. And all of a sudden, this monster, a terrifying force of nature from his past, born of the device that destroyed the original Godzilla, has now mutated, become something even more terrifying than Godzilla. Actually proving Dr. Serizawa correct in that film, saying that, well, what if something terrible really does happen with Yashin Destroyer? Well, something terrible does happen. And this giant Satan-looking monster thing over here, uh, Destroya, okay, this thing is flat-out bigger than Godzilla, flat-out stronger. It flies. It just outperforms Godzilla pretty much in almost every single spot until he hulks up in the end when he's about to melt down, able to fire off shockwaves. 
and defeat the monster that killed his son. Let's call it his son. Okay, same family becomes Godzilla's son. Kills him. Godzilla kills back Destroya, even though he had a little help of the, of the military. There is a deleted scene that you can see on one of the releases, one of the home releases. Actually, Destroya gets back up after fighting with Godzilla. And, you know, fighting with the military, he falls to the ground. Okay, he gets back up and continues fighting Godzilla. And then the two fight, and it's kind of implied that Godzilla rips off Destroya's horn. And then Destroyer freezes to death and then just shatters. Okay, it's really cool. I would have loved to have seen that scene in the film. It was part of an alternate take of that fight sequence, but I don't think the horn worked correctly, so they cut that whole scene and they just refilmed it, and it's just... <sighs> very cool, and the way these two battled each other, just before Godzilla melted down, you know, they feel the emotion. The whole movie, you're bargaining with the movie. Don't do this. Don't kill Godzilla. You don't need to kill Godzilla. Well, they do. <sighs> and it was really emotional, and it really touched me. But don't worry about that, because all the radiation went into Godzilla Jr., and he became the new Godzilla, and he went off to not have a franchise afterwards, because they sold it to TriStar. And we got Godzilla 98. And then I got sad. So, number two... We have Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah from the 1991 film Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Now, this is the first battle they had with each other in Hokkaido, where after Godzilla, you know, gains all of his power and then comes to fight. And he battles with King Ghidorah. And it's an awesome battle that they have. Now, there's this talk saying that the Heisei series, all they do is just beam battles. They don't do any acrobatic stuff, you know, and, you know, they miss the show, how they would slam each other around, and they'd be able to move around. Okay, calm down. Okay, I love the Showa series, and it's just a joke. Just a joke. Go watch this fight. All of that is shown in this. Godzilla picks up King Ghidorah and repeatedly slams him into the ground over and over again, like he did in Godzilla vs. Guy Gang, except this time he picks him up by the tails, which is even more difficult to do, and he keeps slamming him over and over again. King Ghidorah uses Godzilla as a trampoline, constantly jumping up and down, slamming into him over and over again. These two really giving each other a workout. Eventually, King Ghidorah using his middle head as like a snake trying to strangle Godzilla. Godzilla using his nuclear pulse, getting rid of him, and then knocking him into the sea. Awesome stuff. And you might be wondering what I think about the end of the film with Mecha King Ghidorah. Awesome concept, but the, it, the fight was lacking. Okay, King, Mecha King Ghidorah kind of just stood there like a tank and didn't really move around as much. Where King Ghidorah was more agile and moved around. Maybe you can say that uh, it's Emmy's fault. She didn't know how to control Mecha King Ghidorah, which I don't believe that for a second. I'm pretty sure she would have trained herself how to use Mecha King Ghidorah a lot better. But, you know, it's just something about it. Just didn't really, you don't really move around that much. And when it did fly, it immediately got shot out of the sky then. So it's like, cool. Not as cool. Awesome. But not as awesome. Know what I mean? So that is my number two. I'm going to make a lot of people angry with my number one. It's a very current fight. It took place a few months ago, and it is... The Battle of Boston, from the film Godzilla, King of the Monsters. We have Godzilla battling with King Ghidorah, with a little help from Mothra, and once Mothra makes her appearance, Rodan makes his appearance, and we have kind of a pseudo-remake of Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, with all these monsters fighting each other. This time, Rodan actually helping the uh, what he believes is the true alpha, King Ghidorah, battling with Rodan, with Mothra, you know, Mothra actually does a pseudo kill shot with uh, Rodan, seemingly killing him as Godzilla and King Ghidorah continue battling each other. 
Godzilla's pulsating with energy, just destroying King Ghidorah. As King Ghidorah, you know, reaches, he gets some electricity, and he starts, you know, acting like he's got all the power, shocking everything around. These two continue battling. King Ghidorah actually lifted Godzilla up into the sky, you know, dropping him from orbit. Godzilla falling to the ground. Craziness, as it seems like it's all over. Mothra comes to make the save. King Ghidorah kills Mothra, and her essence goes into Godzilla. Godzilla rises, you know, glowing red, like he is burning Godzilla, you know, dub critical mass Godzilla, then destroys King Ghidorah. Stands on top of a mountain, no, 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 on top of a pile of rubble as the other kaiju, the other titans, you know, surround him. Rodan bows to him, all the other kaiju bow to him. And Godzilla roars loud into the sky as the victor, as we get the awesome credits. And after the credits, we get the uh, special look at Godzilla vs. Kong with the special cave painting. Looks awesome. Keeps going. And then we get the ending where it looks like they found one of the severed heads of King Ghidorah. What does that mean? What Are we going to get another King Ghidorah or are we going to get something a little more sinister in the future? Amazing fight. The music was awesome with it. The fight was awesome, just showing off all the epicness. It, was, it had Heisei moments. It had show moments. It had a little millennium in there. Godzilla was awesome. It had pure, top-notch form battling a brand new, awesome King Ghidorah. The two of them just you know, almost leveling boss in the way how those two battled. Throw in some Mothra and throw in some Rodan all battling each other. We've got all of the cornerstones of the original Showa series. You got Gojira, you got Radon, you have Mosura, you have King Gogidra all battling each other all at the same time. It is glorious. It is wonderful. And every time I watch that fight, you know, Godzilla first makes his appearance and he blasts King Ghidorah. And then they start playing the uh, Godzilla March as he's stomping towards King Ghidorah to fight. It just always gets me amped up. I always feel that, you know, tingle in the back of my neck. It always feels like I'm stepping out into, you know, a snow-covered valley. You know, that's how cold, that's all the chills I get up my spine whenever I see these two battle each other in that film. It is awesome. I love it. Okay, the human characters around it, you know, interacting with the kaiju and the titans and the way how they're fighting awesome. That's the way how it's supposed to be done. It just looks magnificent. And that is my top 10 kaiju battles. All my opinion, you know, just, uh, you know, sharing some love with uh, friends and family over on the, you know, G YouTubers, you know, Leslie Chambers, Phil the Kaiju King, and anyone else who wants to participate in this. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of interest. So, if anyone else wants to participate in this, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Um, other than that, this is GoJ51 saying goodnight. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, see you all with the next video. Hopefully, this is going to be an unboxing. Check y'all later.